and close this. And uh, we're gonna start. Uh, so we're gonna start Act Six, Act Two. I'm actually gonna. It's actually close to the top of the hour, so this is good time. I'm gonna take a quick break to go freshen up my coffee, uh, and then we will spend hour two of stream starting on Act Six, Act Two. Uh, for those of you who missed earlier. Uh, let me put music back on. For those of you who missed earlier, I am actually going to be ending the stream directly at noon. Um, regardless of where we are um, in the story, because uh, my girlfriend and I have a movie we're going to go to at like 12.45. So we have to end like right at noon so we can take off to do that. So anyway, I'll be right back. I'm going to get more coffee. You guys go freshen up your morning beverage. Get up, move around, stretch a bit. Pet your dog or cat if you have one handy. And we will start Act 6, Act 2 in a moment. Hi friends, I just got, I just filled up my Dragon Ball mug with more coffee. It's actually pretty hot right now, I don't think I'm actually, I'm not going to sip it <laughs> at the moment, because I don't want to burn my tongue. Alright, um, before we start with Act 6, Act 2 guys, uh, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, so, next weekend, uh, there will be no Homestuck stream next weekend because it is Memorial Day weekend and I am going to be out of town visiting some buddies of mine in another state so um so no homestuck next weekend um homestuck next homestuck stream will be whatever that first saturday in june is um so that would be june 2nd june 2nd 10 a.m is gonna be our next homestuck stream so so there's that um and also just to give you guys a little forewarning um there are going to be a couple of weekends coming up over like the next month and a half where I'm going to not be doing a Homestuck stream because I have like friends visiting or like I'm going out of town, things like that. So summer is happening. So, you know, there are summer things like like weddings and friend visits and traveling and stuff like that. So, so there'll be a weekend here or there where I just have to like cancel the stream. Uh, so just FYI. Um, I think uh, coming up. And I'll, I'll announce this again later, but if you want to, like, I don't know, mark this down on your calendars if you do that. Um, there's not going to be Homestuck stream uh, June 9th because I have a friend visiting. And then um, June 30th, I'm going to be out of town as well. So just FYI. So no Homestuck next Saturday, but we'll be back on June 2nd. So yay. All right. Um, oh, also, uh, streams, streams this week, though. I will still be streaming Monday and Wednesday evening this week. Um, Monday, we are doing Transistor right now. Um, so that's 7 p.m. Central Time, Monday night. We're going to play some more Transistor tomorrow night. Uh, and then this coming Wednesday is going to be my final Suikoden 2 stream. We're going to beat Suikoden 2 this Wednesday, and that's at 7 p.m. Central Time as well. So I'm super excited for that. Um, and then after Suikoden 2... We're going to start Night in the Woods, and that will be the uh, the Wednesday after this coming Wednesday. So, so yeah, that's going to be starting up soon. Transistor is cool, Samus. I'm really enjoying it so far. I really like the uh, the like the strategy based battle system. It's really really cool. But yes. Anywho, all right, we have an hour left in stream, so let's go ahead and jump into Act Six, Act Two. All right. Here we go. You are Jane Crocker again. Wait, didn't we just see Jane get blown up, though? I wonder if this is going to explain, like, what's happening. And once again, you have woken up on the moon of Prospect without any recollection of how you fell asleep. 
You think you were going outside to get the mail? You can't remember. Hey, Ignatus, how's it going? You did make it just in time for the start of the Homestuck portion of the stream. The moon is presently eclipsing Skya. From your fanciful dream room atop your golden tower, you see you have seen many remarkable things in the clouds. Things which you cannot explain. But against all better judgment, you have a feeling that what you are fondly regarding could very well be some sort of miracle. All the miracles! The miracle of a new beginning. Whoa. What is this that we are seeing in the cloud vision right now? I'm curious as to what that might be. Maybe we'll find out. Whoa. Whose shadow is that? That looks like... Actually, I don't know who that looks like. Oh, God. Whoever it is has a dagger. Is this Jack? Is this her Jack? Oh, God! Oh, she just got stabbed! Oh, my God! With a greet sound effect. Greet. Dead? Oh, my God! What? Holy crap! Another coffin clogger bites the dust. Holy crap! So wait a second. So we've already seen that like Jake's dream self is dead, and now Jane's dream self is dead. Holy crap, what is going on? Oh my god, yep, that's Jack. That's their Jack. Two down, two to go. Oh, so Jack must have killed Jake. Must have killed Dream Jake. And now he killed Dream Jane. Jane, be Jack Noir. <laughs> Jane is too dead at the moment to be Jack Noir. Jack Noir just bees himself instead. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Holy cow. Good lord. Andrew Hussey is not messing around with Act 6. Jack, get watch. Get the shit out of the way. You're a busy bureaucrat. Clock is ticking and time is dead, kids. Oh my god. Jack, check time. The moment rapidly approaches. You're gonna slow these alabaster sons of bitches and how- You're gonna show the- Sorry, that's not slow, that's show. Let me try this again. The moment rapidly approaches. You're gonna show these alabaster sons of bitches how a cold war is done. You can't wait to read it in their papers. The maid is dead. Our life is pathetic. Blah, blah, blah. Or some such monotone drivel overheard during one of their pointless, weepy cadaver parades. There'll be, mo there'll be no mistaking it this time. No servant will discover the body and inform... Sorry. No servant will discover the body and inform the queen that Prospect's remaining hero pass in her sleep peacefully and mysteriously. When the clock strikes twelve, no one in this wretched kingdom will have any doubt who's calling the shots here. You're gonna bring this whole goddamn ball down. All right, so Jack, contact Droll. You touch base with your administration's top powder monkey, none other than Dursite Bumbler Extraordinaire, the Courtyard Droll. You ask if he's done rigging the tower to blow, and he says you bet. You say good, over, but he mutters something over the radio you don't quite catch. You say, what is it? He says, oh nothing, boss. You say, out with it. He asks, isn't this cheating, assassinating the heroes like this before the war's even really begun? You say, what do you care? Just follow your orders. He says, oh, of course, no question. He just thought it was against the rules or something. You say it's all fair game now the kingdom's under new management. The new boss ain't, the new boss ain't opposed to taking some shrewd tactical shortcuts. You like the cut of her gin. He says that he supposes he can't complain. Her policy toward elaborate hats seems to be as lenient as the old queen's. You say, will you shut up about the hats? He says it's probably because she wears... <laughs> probably because she wears the most grand and luxurious fluffy hat he's ever seen. You say you don't think it's a hat. You think it's something called hair. He says, oh. Okay, so hang on. So, so there's something going on here. There's like a new queen. And I'm curious as to who that might be. 
You say, now quit all the yapping and follow your damn orders. He says, okay, but it still just feels wrong. You say, what does? He says, he doesn't know. Just something about feeding that poor sleeping boy all those deadly peanuts just felt wrong. Oh god, did Dream Jake have like a deadly peanut allergy? <laughs> oh jeez. You say, you don't care if it felt like a fucking full body massage. Just get those bombs ready to blow, over and out. Wait, fed him what? Deadly peanuts? <laughs> He says the intelligence report he says the intelligence report he had said the kid wouldn't take well to peanuts. So he snuck in there with a whole bag of them. You know, like the kind from circuses. He says he ate most of them because he says he ate most of them because they were delicious. And as far as he knows, aren't poisonous to most everybody else. But he did save a few to get the job done, because he's a professional who always carries out his orders. Severely allergic, deadly peanuts. It's not easy feeding a sleeping boy some peanuts, he says. He says he had to work extra hard to put them in his mouth and then use his hands to make his mouth chew up nuts. Oh my gosh. But mission accomplished nonetheless, he tells you. You should be pleased to know these nuts were super deadly. Though, to be fair, he doesn't know if he died from the poison or just choked on a bunch of barely chewed peanut bits. You know what else is super deadly, you say? Knives. Sharp, deadly knives you stick in people's soft torsos to make them bleed until they die. He doesn't have anything to say to that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jack, wrap this up. You say forget it. What's done is done. The Prospidian heroes are dead, and that's all that matters. Just be ready to detonate at the appointed time. He says roger that, but wonders if there are any more orders after that. He asks, what about the other two? The ones on our moon and most the ones on our moon and most importantly is there any particular snack that is poisonous to them you say forget about those two they're much trickier to deal with you've got the dignitary working on it now you'll get a report from him soon when you return you wouldn't have even bothered leaving in the first place but you wanted to make the trip personally and stick it to all these self-righteous sky bathing goody two shoes yourself hang on something's happening here you gotta go oh something is happening here there's like some kind of like blue aura thing happening off to the side. I just noticed that. Um, what's going on here? Uh, yeah, Harp, that is the album we're listening to. Colors and Mayhem Universe A. Jack, inspect the torso. Oh, he turned his back on the body. Never turn your back on the body, Jack. Jack, inspect the torso. This can't be good. You better hit the road and you better hit the road and blow this joint before the dead broad does some sort of lifey thing. Jack, hit the road, hit road, blow joint. All right, he's hitting the road and blowing the joint. Oh gosh, what's happening? Is there a lifey thing happening? Oh wait, was there a retcon thing? Oh yeah, there's some black goop right there. Okay, I see it. I see what's going on there. All right. Oh geez, the ball's gonna drop. At 12. Apparently you can, Infinite Snowman. Apparently you can. Uh oh. Oh no, it's getting blowed up. Oh no, it's dropping! Drop. Bounce. Oh jeez. Oh, there's like a Prospidian right there. Or a Prospician. I'm still not sure how it's pronounced. That would make sense, Dragon Spirit. That would totally make sense if this came out at New Year's. Uh, this track is called Indigo Archer. But now it's over. Now we're on Purple Tyrant. There it goes. Keeps going. Wait, what did it just crash into? Oh, just like some thing in like... Oh gosh, explosion. What is going on? What is going on with Jane and why? 
Oh, you know what? Tara's not on the couch anymore. I think she's actually keeping my girlfriend company in the kitchen, so I'm gonna turn off pet cam. Alright. Oh, she's not? Oh. Oh, she's in my room? Okay. Well, Tara's not here. Oh, she's on her doggy bed. Okay. Cool. Alright, Act 6, Act 2. No, wait a second. So, so the mailbox blew up at the end of Act 6, Act 1. But as it turns out, Jane is actually like on the other side of the house sleeping? Huh. And her dad thinks she got blown up. Jane, wake up. What the heck just happened? Now you remember. The mailbox is booby-trapped, but you survived somehow and got knocked out. How did you get all the way over here? That is what I want to know. <laughs> what happened there? Dad seems just as dumbfounded as you are, and more than a little distraught. Did little did little Seb whisk you away in the nick of time? Can that little bunny really move that fast? Where is he? You suppose you should let Dad know you're okay, but it's been so long since you've enjoyed such a massive prankster's gambit in an exchange with the old man. It's hard not to bask in it, if only for a few seconds. Oh my goodness, what what is happening here? This is a Beck-like cat. The plot hole is small enough to support a cat. Oh my gosh. Have we seen this cat yet? I don't remember seeing this cat yet. Oh, it's the god cat again. You guessed that explains it. Oh, god cat. Well, there we go. Just look at that little aloof. Just look at that aloof little bastard. He doesn't give a shit about anything, does he? You guess you should feel grateful toward him for saving your life, but you know he's just as likely to rescue you from an explosion as he is to randomly teleport you across town, forcing you to call your dad and ask for a ride home, while you spend all day standing in some random field in the pouring rain while you wait hours for your dad to come and pick you up after he gets lost because he plugged the wrong place into Google Maps. Oh my gosh. Jane, call G-Cat down from the tree. So this is basically the cat version of Beck, isn't it? God help us all. Even if you were inclined to do that, he wouldn't respond to that name. You're pretty sure he doesn't have a name. You and your friends just call just call him the G-Cat for lack of anything else to call him. Wait, G-Cat? Hang on. Wasn't... Wasn't G-Cat like one of the DNA sequences we saw like way back when like there was stuff scribbled on people's walls? Because that's totally a letter combination that's possible in a DNA sequence. I'm just saying. I do remember Ignatus. I remember exactly that. That's just what I was saying. <laughs> Actually, it's spoilers. Oh, okay. Anyway, let's see. Let's call him g -Cap for the lack of anything else to call him. Everybody has opinions, but nobody can agree on a good name. You think he probably doesn't want a name. He's just a feisty stray who likes to meddle with your life, then vanish for weeks at a time. Uh-oh. Looks like the jig is up, yet again. Is the jig ever anywhere but up? That's what you want to know. You feel bad about leaving him in suspense for even a moment. Your gambit gets totally rocked by a guilty conscience. He tells you to get inside this instant. Jane, return to room. <laughs> yeah, is, is G-Cat... I'm trying to remember what I learned about DNA in, like, high school biology. Wasn't there... Is G-Cat the sequence that, like that tells like the DNA, that tells the body like that this is like the start of the sequence. I'm trying to remember, I feel like there's like always this sequence that signals like, okay, this is the start of the chain. I don't know if GCAT is actually it, but. Anyway. Right, I know that those are the only letters used in DNA representation. Um. And, and this, like, isn't really important at all, but, like, 
with with RNA, isn't one of those letters different? I think three of the letters are the same, and there's like a different letter in RNA. But anyway, doesn't really matter. You get inside this instant and march back up to your bedroom. Dad didn't say as much, but it's a safe bet you are now permagrounded for life. You hear a loud thump just outside your door. I did notice that a while ago, Dragon Spirit. I think that's really cool. Jane, contact BFFC. Oh my gosh, he just like straight up put a, the bathtub like in front of Jane's door so like she can't get out now. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, Ignatus. That sounds right. As long as, you, as long as you just got done paying the piper, you might as well get busy eating all this goddamn crow. Oh, so much of the stuff has gathered on your plate. She appears to be online now. It looks like she sent you the hacked file while you were away. Oh, so we can still play the alpha. Oh, man. We get Lalan's voice. All right. Hey, ahem. Rolal? Uncle, sorry. I was having important chats. Oh? With whom? With yet another ineligible fucking bachelor? Who else I have to talk to? <laughs> yeah. Um, which one precisely? These three is mufferable prick extraordinaire. <laughs> oh, wow. Extra dinner. <laughs> Yum. If the chats and surplus dinners were truly important, I wouldn't want to interrupt. <laughs> of course, not just the usual BS. Chats with you will always get precedence anyways. Unless... This is more of you giving me shit about not believing me in all my, all my sick true facts. Actually, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I see. Go on. You see, I was just the target of another assassination attempt. The fuck? Two, in fact. One here in the real world as I attempted to retrieve the mail. Luckily, it was thwarted by a certain cat who shall remain nameless. <laughs> oh, man. God cat, BBF, good, BFF. No, wait, God was right. Fuck it, both spellings are true. <laughs> oh my God. But in the process of being rescued from the explosion, I was knocked unconscious. And in my dream, there was another assassination attempt. This one I believe was successful. Uh oh. I'm becoming convinced that our dream cells are being picked off by violent hooligans. Shit! Hooligans? Uh, yes, but I think you mean batter witch thugs. Perhaps? The one who accosted me was a knife-wielding lu knife lunatic. And it's responsible, it's reasonable to deduce the same forces were responsible for Jake's death on Prospect as well. It looks like we are in the clutches of an actual caper, a real-life mystery, which under different circumstances would be quite exciting. But the truth is, I think we are all in great danger. Well, fuck. I guess it's time to take this shit up to red alert! To where it's been for like, fucking ever, Jane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that wasn't all there was to the dream. Shortly before I was stabbed, I had another long gander- I had a rather long gander at Skya. A gander, you say? Yes. How good a gander? <laughs> I would say a pretty substantial gander. Okay. And during this totally massive gander you snagged, what did you see? <laughs> I saw things in the clouds. Things. Yes. Things. What things? Things happening in the future, I think. Many events pertaining to us, all of us, and other people I didn't recognize. It was a bit overwhelming. It made me feel small, insignificant, relative to whatever it is we're about to involve ourselves with. And honestly, it made me feel pretty foolish, too. Foolish? Why foolish? Seduction of Oh my god. Jane's text is kind of hard to read, Harp, because it's like such a light blue. I began to wonder why I ever had the audacity to think I know of no much of anything about the world we live in or the journey we're about to take, or to think I could ever rule anything out. 
I have a feeling that whatever I saw, it means you've been telling the truth all along. About everything. And I'm starting to feel like a complete idiot for doubting you. Aw, oh, man. I've been one great big horse's caboose, and I think you're owed an apology. Do you think you can forgive me? Jane? Damn, you're making me feel like shit here. Why? Um, uh, no reason. Just, uh, hey, did you download the game file I sent yet? I did, and at this point, I guess I have no choice but to use it. I guess you were a step ahead of me yet again. Why? Because in because the one in the blah, 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 sorry, because the one in the mail detonated in my most recent assassination attempt. What? A oh, fuck those hacks! The old exploding game trick wolf would stoop to such low brow shenanigans like that. <laughs> so many sweet typos. Oh my god. That witch just makes me fucking furious sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, the tactic was quite underhanded, yes. Yeah, uh, so, what were we talking about again? Sorry, I'm just worked up over it. <laughs> it's so fun to read her drunk speak. It's fantastic. <laughs> I don't blame you. Where we were, by my estimation, was a place wherein I was about to awkwardly attempt to swallow a helping of humble pie to somehow make it up to you for my years of stubborn mistrust. Hey, Jane, wasn't that a bunch of split infinitives? Hmm? Split. To awkwardly attempt to somehow make it up? Oh, <laughs> lol, so busted. Oh gosh, what a doofus. You see, I clearly don't have all the answers. I really had some nerve challenging anyone on practically any subject. Don't beat yourself up too bad. We both know that rule is bullshit anyway. To hold yourself to too high a standard and those standards kind of leak out and start getting applied to other people, I guess, sometimes. You really don't have to apologize, Janie. Or eat a humble pip or anything. Oh, <laughs> you've got to... Or anything. All you've got to do is maybe not be such a huge tight ass all the time. <laughs> God, what even? That's fair. But I would still like to make a gesture, even if it's one partially motivated by self-interest, seeing as I clearly have much to learn. Huh? I would like to give you a free pass for a day. It is good for 24 solid hours of absolute credulity from your best friend. Hmm. Huh? Okay, waiting for you to say what the fuck you're exactly talking about. It means that starting now, whatever you tell me, I will have to believe you. I promise. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Um, are you there? Ro? Shh. This is a dramatic pause. Calm your tits. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Exactly how dramatic are we talking here? Shall I go retrieve a magazine? <laughs> oh my gosh. Sigh. Oh, this song sounds happy. Alright. Okay then. What do you want me to say for you to auto believe in? Hmm, everything, I guess. I'd like to get completely up to speed, if possible. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I already said everything. Want me to just say it all again? Some reiteration certainly couldn't hurt, but this time I won't work so hard to sift the fantastical from the plausible. So, like, stuff I said about my mom, or... Sure. Okay, well, for starters, <laughs> she really is the notable author you know. Oh, I know that. Yes, I did notice Jaspers was right there. Good old Jaspers. And then there's her martini, of course. Um, where was I? Oh, I know that. That was always something I had no trouble believing, considering the public documentation even reclusive celebrities received. And frankly, the family resemblance is obvious. Yup. Anyway, it would be disingenuous if I found your relation far-fetched, since we're all apparently related to noteworthy people. It's just one of those funny things. True that. 
Then, what else can I talk about? Like her occult magics and stuff? Because I don't know a whole lot about the magics. Besides the fact that they're all real as shit can get. Maybe we should start at the very beginning? Okay, but the beginning was a heck of a long time ago. Do you remember around when we first started talking? Why? And you claimed you were the only one and claimed you were the one making my pumpkins disappear? <laughs> Why? You later proceeded to try and prove to me that what you were saying was true, but none of your attempts thereafter would ever bear any fruit. Pardon the pun. Okay, <laughs> but it ain't pardon because a pumpkin ain't even a fruit. <laughs> it's a big orange porch thing for Halloween, dumb nuts. <laughs> oh, oh wait, I didn't mean that. I didn't inflect that correctly. It's a big orange porch thing for Halloween, numb nuts. <laughs> Yes, I know what pumpkins are. It was a joke, silly. What I'm trying to say is, in thinking back to those days when you couldn't verify your claims, it made me think the whole thing was a big ruse. And I think this unfortunately began a pattern of mistrust. It was always hard to rule out the possibility that you could be joking about other things as well. Yeah, but it's not my fault. I mean, a pipherification tech is notoriously unreliable. Remember? I explained this. I can't just always... I can't just always purify stuff from you anytime I want. I can only take stuff I'm allowed to, which is much random. Like, stuff that by taken I'd be messing up the timeline, because that stuff is supposed to be there and serve some funkitin it hasn't served yet. <laughs> so most of the time, if I try... I, so most of the time, if I try, all I get is slime on my end. But pumpkins, for some reason, are a little easier to take. I don't know why. Like, they're specifically and arbitrarily unhinged from space-time. It is spooky. <laughs> Milan has a purification tech. I don't know why, but she does. I couldn't begin to explain the science behind such a technology either, but I guess the important thing is, regardless of how or why it works, this is a story you continue to stand by? That is, you are still taking credit for the mysterious disappearance of all those pumpkins I grew years ago? Fuck yeah! I so gonked your guards, Jane! Did you gank them when my gourd was down? <laughs> oh, nice pun. Yes! Yes, I did exactly that! Snatched your patch, sucker! <laughs> Very well. Then I believe that is what happened. That's all I'm trying to say here. So, okay. You believe what? You believe that. Now what? Now, nothing, really. You may continue to tell me anything you would like with the confidence that I won't doubt you. So by all means, go ahead. Okay, got it. So, Jane, what does Tit feel like to get stabbed by a bad guy? <laughs> Oh, come on. Huh? That is a question. Yeah, so? It's not, sort of any, it's not any sort of revelation or statement for me to take at face value. Dead, burn it. This isn't that difficult. And for the record, it's not great. What's well, not? Getting stabbed by a bad guy. It isn't all that peachy. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Must have sucked. <laughs> or dream sucked. IDK. So... You're not in the mood to tell me things? No, I am. I'm psyched about you wanting to believe me at all, but part of me still feels like I should prove it. Like, I tried to once. It was just frustrating. I mean, I'm a scientist. I should be able to prove my shit. Like, subject my claims to the frick fucking... fucking madrigogs. <laughs> um, madrigogs? Mad riggers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Ooh, ooh, I'm getting breakfast. Breakfast just got handed to me. Yay. Guys, my girlfriend just made me breakfast, and it looks delicious. So, if you don't mind me, guys, I'm actually going to, like, eat while streaming is happening, too. So, mm. Oh, my gosh, this is so good. Thank you. Guys, I have the best girlfriend. <laughs> she agrees with me. Okay. 
Oh, she says I should tell you guys that she has the best boyfriend, but I, I, I have yet to meet this person. All right. All right. Anyway. Yes, good nutrition is good. All right. Um, let's see. I mean, trust between friends is sweet and everything, but I don't know if I want to be the repipian of like a buttload of pity believings. It's not about pity. It's more like a gesture I'm trying to make. Or maybe that's not quite right. It has more to do with set, setting things right for myself than making it up to you. Does that make sense? Um, shoot, I'm doing such a terrible job explaining this. Pet cam is not currently on, by the way, if you want to sit on the couch and not be seen. Patiently, patiently sips beverage. Like, one of the characters I'm doing is drunk all the time. So, <laughs> so I'm doing my drunk voice. Okay, good. <laughs> the bottom line is, I want to believe the things you say now. That's all you need to know. Okay, that's good. I want that too, but... I still want to prove it, irregardlessly. <laughs> Shudders uncontrollably at word usage. Oops, sorry. I still want to prove it irregardless, Ollie. <laughs> All fixed, tight as fuck. So, you down for one last try? Sure. Okay, let's get busy. What you what you want to see me disappearify? <laughs> yes. So eating while streaming is incredibly professional. <laughs> oh, someone from chat says, Just remember, he was our boyfriend first. <laughs> All right, Jane, look around. All right, I'm gonna take a bite of food. This is so good. So this is what, this is like egg and ground beef and tomato and some sour cream and some hot sauce. Mm. Oh man, this does take like, this tastes like taco meat. Mmm. That's so good. Oh, I should have been so mad. I should mind control an injured stranger to beat me. So I won't be as attracted. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. I don't know. The baking chest, maybe? Too big. I got size restrictions here. Bigger stuff takes huge amounts of power to swipe. So this gizmo I have has a built-in size cap. Like, something as big as you, for instance, I can't take. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> Aw, that's sweet of you, I guess? It was totes sweet of me to try and steal you for the hangouts, but it didn't work because of bullshit. But I can take stuff somewhat smaller. What are the restrictions? Just dump your shit on the floor. Tell me everything that's there. So good. It's still tasty. All right. Well, what immediately catches my attention is this enormous book. I wonder how it squares with your size restriction. What book? My Unabridged Sassikers. It's a very rare edition and a precious family heirloom. So I don't know if it would make an ideal candidate for the journey. No, no, are you kidding? That shit is perfect. She'll be just the right size, like, big, but just barkly not too big. But what if it gets damaged? Psh, it'll be set fire! <laughs> oh, silly me, what was I even worried about? Er, uh, oh man, sent, fine. <laughs> that wasn't even a Freudian slip. Dr. Freud just tripped over an errant phallus, tumbled down a flight of stairs, and broke his neck, and then his cigar exploded comically in his face. Fr awful. <laughs> Jane, you're funny. OMG, still lolling at that word boner I made. Oh, at that word boner I made. OMG. Oh, oh my god. It was spectacular. Oh, wait. Schwinder, you told me to write down something 4,000 4, pages and remember it? I don't. I don't. Oh, right. That comment that a book could kill a cat. Oh wait, wait, oh that's not, oh my god, is Jasper's about to be killed by that book? That's what's gonna happen, isn't it? Oh god, that's what's about to happen. Anyway, 
But for real, I won't set your fucking joke book on fire, Jane. It doesn't even do that, even if it goes the worst kinds of wrong. <laughs> Couldn't we send Wise Guy instead? At least it can be easily replaced. Jane! Huh? Jane! Hmm? Fuck Wise Guy! It would be so lame as a giggity pig book. God damn, who am I kidding? I don't even know how to spell giggity pig whilst sober. <laughs> Could be as sober as a church tries to look at it. Gune, Gune, I don't care. Shit looks intrinsically fucked typographically speaking. <laughs> what even is she saying right now? I don't even understand. So fuck that rod and fuck those per particular pigs. No, I reject your proposal that we fuck wise guy, whatever that actually means, or for that matter, the spelling of any adorable rodents named after African nations. Jane, are you being tired ass again? I don't think so. We talked about this. Uh, about what? About you being a tight ass. I am not being a tight ass. Janie, it seems to me that there is a maths percent chance of you being a huge tight ass. Are you being a huge tight ass on me, Jane? Oh, god damn it. Take the book. What do I care? Yes, that's the spare bit. <laughs> now you're a believing with petrol. <laughs> I fail to see what offering up a priceless book for your wildly capricious science experiment it has to do with my resolution to be less stingy with my beliefs, but all right. Haha, <laughs> we relax about the book. I'm only just teasing, because there's like practically a 100% chance this won't wonk like all I see. <laughs> Work wonk like always. So, ready? Yes, let's just get on with it. Oh my goodness. RL to purify. Oh, so Lalonde's first name begins with R, just like Rose. Maybe her name is like Rochester. Probably not. Okay. A purify. It worked. The book is gone. Oh no. Oh shit. What is it? Shit, 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 shit! Did you receive the book? Shit! Shit, 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 shit! <laughs> Don't tell me. The book is damaged somehow, isn't it? Fuck! Sigh. <laughs> is it at least somewhat intact? Or was it completely incinerated in transit? I just knew we should have used Wise Guy. I can't believe this. Don't worry, the book itself is totally fine. Just you. Oh, then what's the problem? I'm so stupid. So stupid. So stupid. So stupop. Will you tell me what happened? You gotta go. BBL. We'll talk about important stuffs later. Tipsy nostalgic ceased bothering Gussie Gumshoe. Tipsy nostalgic began bothering Gussie Gumshoe. P.S. Jane, thank you for believing me. Ceased bothering Gussie Gumshoe. Began bothering <laughs> Gussie Gumshoe. Oh shit! On last thing, Jane. Do not run the file I sent you before I get back. I need to, uh, just don't without me, okay? Cease bothering Gussie Gumshoe. Begin bothering Gussie Gumshoe. File! Cease bothering Gussie Gumshoe. <laughs> you wonder what her deal was. It's always something with her. Hey, Steiny. Hey, buddy. Here's a cat that's definitely alive and not at all dead. Oh, hi, pal. All right. You wonder what her deal was. It's always something with her. You again notice her game file, beckoning you to play. But she warned you not to until she gets back. Fooey. Oh, hey. You just noticed your slightly abridged edition of Sassikers over there on the floor. You guess you could have sent the much, the much less valuable copy and saved a lot of arguing. But what's done is done. There's more reading material sprinkled about, too. You've clearly got some time to kill before your BFFC gets back from her emergency. Might as well do some casual reading. But there's nothing casual about hoisting an even even an abridged Sassikers up to your lap, so forget that. There's always Game Girl, but the articles are always a bit vapid and, in your view, somewhat demeaning to female gamers and women in general. You and... 
You and Rolal are convinced the whole thing is just written by the same odious D-bags who write Game Bro, which is exactly what makes it exactly what makes it good for all the LULs. Her words. Speaking of bros and the games they play. We're gonna read Pony Pals, apparently. Jane, read Pony Pals. Oh gosh, some of you are reacting to Pony Pals. <laughs> what is Pony Pals all about? <laughs> what are we about to do? Oh, that's right, this is from DS. This is from Strider. Cool. You've read this a million times already. It's one of your favorite gifts. Another gander at it sure couldn't hurt. Let's examine the contents. Can Acorn save the animals? Detective Pony? <laughs> oh my gosh. By Jean Batancourt. <laughs> from Scholastic Publishing. Amazing chapter titles, potentially the table of contents for the greatest book ever written. But Patancourt shout out this night shout out this nightmare instead. Contents, chapter one, a visitor. Chapter two, screaming ponies. Motherfuck! Chapter three, danger. Chapter four, flames. Chapter five, missing. Chapter six, the fight. Chapter seven, blood in the snow. Holy shit. Chapter eight, homeless. Chapter nine, three ideas. Chapter 10, Acorn's Shadow, A Pony Broods, <laughs> chapter, and then, and then he added chapter 11, The Final Freakout, Appendix A, <laughs> Official Body Count. <laughs> this is what the story should have been, according to Strider. <laughs> Horseshoes, uh, whatever. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like Strider should have written this book instead of whoever wrote this. Jane, flip to page one. <laughs> oh my god, is this all just like annotated by Strider? <laughs> To make it, like, so much better than it actually is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Tragic pony news? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Chapter 1. A visitor. Anna Harley. Dumb name. Sounds like the product of speech impediment by imbecile. <laughs> oh my god. Anna, Har Anna Harley came out her back door and ran across the backyard. There were two ponies in the paddock behind Anna's house and yard. Hey, ponies, Anna called out. We're going for a trail ride. <laughs> As she prepared the noose adroitly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. So what's happening here is like this is like a children's book, but annotated by this character's friend to make it like so much darker. <laughs> the other pony, little Sebastian! Yes! <laughs> Instead of Snow White, it's little Sebastian. <laughs> bye bye, little Sebastian! <laughs> The other pony, Lil Sebastian, belonged to Anna's next door neighbor and Pony Pal, the city of Pawnee, Indiana. Oh my gosh, this is all Parks and Rec. Lil Seb came over to Anna, but Acorn stayed in the shed. Anna thought that Acorn was trying to hide from her. He liked to play, I'm scared shitless of my master. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, and what's this note in the margin here? Almost a good name for you, not sure why. Jane, turn page. <laughs> Anna went into the shed. Acorn wasn't fucking around. <laughs> he was staring at a fluffy back cat with white paws taking a dump on his favorite saddle. <laughs> oh my god. The cat was staring back at Acorn, shitting like tomorrow was the thing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh jeez. I want I want someone to like just actually just take like a random children's book and like change it the way this is being changed right now. Hey, kitty, said Anna. What are you doing here? She asked as, as the act of defecation oddly forged to the girl. What? <laughs> Pawnee came into the shed behind Anna. Whose cat is that? The rural township inquired. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know, answered Anna. It's not a pony, so who seriously gives a fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. Suddenly, a mouse ran from behind the feed bin. The contrived incident caused some extra shit to happen. Acorn was like, oh, hell no. Not the fuck in my paddock, bitch. <laughs> Acorn snickered as if to say, vile slurs omitted. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Man, screw handwriting. This is easier. Oh, my gosh. This is so good. The cat leaped back up on the straw and curled himself into a ball. Acorn took a few steps toward the cat. And <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Acorn took a few steps toward the cat and crushed it to death with his magnificent hooves. Oh, my God. Acorn nickered triumphantly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's so cute, murmured the fictional Midwestern burrow. <laughs> 
Pam Crandall rode another goddamn pony up to the shed. She said hi to her pony pals, and the whole crew beamed complacently about their bullshit horse club. Anna pointed at the cat. Acorn has a new kind of meat he appears to tolerate. She exploded. <laughs> Later, about halfway through the book, rather than see the gag through to the bitter end, Strider began pacing over entire pages of the original text with his own completely rewritten version of the story, while keeping all the chapter titles. His revision is a tough, emotionally draining read, but it's cathartic in all the worst ways possible. He tends to get carried away with his projects. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is great. So, like, is this an actual book, guys? Does anybody know if this is, like, actually a book in real life? That, like, Andrew Hussey just, like, actually took and just, like, changed to make it, like, so, so dark. It's a real book, Harper? Oh, my gosh. I need to, like, find a copy of this actual book. Is there banjo? Oh, no way. There's a fully voice acted reading of this with Strider's voice over the edits, except it's a whole book. Oh my gosh. I kind of want that. <laughs> Jane, just check out the file already. <laughs> you tried to distract yourself with Strider's literature, but it's no use. Your curiosity is overwhelming. Lalonde could be gone for hours, for all you know. Surely there couldn't be any harm in just installing the file, could there? Probably not. Oh, it's not spoiler-free yet, Kayla? Okay. Well, I will hold off on finding the entire thing then. <laughs> Am I going to have to wait till, like, the end of Homestuck before it's all spoiler-free? Because <laughs> that's going to be, like, a year. <laughs> Alright. That's an odd extension for a file. You don't think you've ever seen it before. This is Suburb client dot till death. Oh god, till death. Jane, install suburb client. Oh my gosh, it's such a good doggy. Install the suburb client. It doesn't even seem to install anything. It just runs a small application when you execute it. Looks like you're one key press away from playing. Do you dare? And press enter when ready. Suburb version dot zero dot zero dot zero. Press enter. Jane, you're doing the thing that Lalan told you not to do. Psst. Oh. What's happening here? Is this Lalan? Hey, Jane. Step away from your compunner. Oh, okay, Kayla. That's good to know. <clears throat> Pewter. <laughs> she even writes code drunk. It's true. Stay away from the step away from the computer, Jane. What is this face? What? What is going on? Oh god! Her computer blew up! And she got blown like right out the window. Holy crap. I mean, Lalan warned her not to run that thing. <laughs> oh gosh. Ooh, and there's gunk over here. Oh, sweet catch! All right, well, Godcat knew to place that couch, like, right there. God, you wish stuff would stop exploding. <laughs> oh, jeez. Jane, answer, answer, is it Dystry, Destry, Distry? I don't know, it's Strider. <clears throat> anyway, it's a Strider. All right, Jane, answer Strider. I should probably warn you. About what? Yet another exploding game trap? Well, shit. She already sent it. Yes, but to be fair, she warned me not to run it. That's weird. Why? She's probably just trying to protect me from the Batter Witch's latest assassination attempt. 
Sheesh, I can't believe all you I can't believe you all finally got me saying Batter Witch 2. Who would who would have thought? No, it's weird because Lalonde was the one who rigged it to explode. It's a bogus copy she coded herself. The real game file she downloaded is totally legit. Oh, oh, whoops, sorry, wrong voice. <laughs> wrong voice. Uh, I meant to do Strider's voice there, I was not paying attention. All right, Shwindu, thanks for hanging out with us. Have a great rest of your weekend. I did, Blake Page, I, I'm sorry. All right. No, it's weird because Lalonde was the one who rigged it to explode. It's a bogus copy she coded herself. The real game file she downloaded is totally legit. What? Really? Got it right here myself. Checked it out. File's fucking clean as a whistle. A whistle that overcame a major substance abuse problem, trying to get its life back on track. The whistle is holding down a steady job now. It's taking things one day at a time. Eat a fucking dinner off that whistle. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll shut up. Why would she do that? To accomplish exactly what it's to, to accomplish exactly what it sounds like got accomplished. You narrowly averting the fake threat to your life, then getting your shit all hot and bothered at the Baroness over it. Then you abdicate your heiress throne or something and give up on this game as a big fuck you to the genocidal cake alien. But if she felt so strongly that I shouldn't play, she could have told me. Or told me more forcefully, I guess. I would have listened, maybe. Oh. She's working through some problems right now. Really doesn't want us to play that game. So, I guess this was the insane stunt she whipped up to derail the inevitable. Kinda reckless for my tastes. One of the above statements is a fucking lie. Are you gutsy enough a gumshoe to spot it? <laughs> Maybe she was justified in taking such an extreme measure. I sure didn't, hadn't been taking her seriously. She even warned me not to play it until she got back. But I went ahead anyway because I was too impatient. Actually, now that I think about it, she prob she was probably going to disarm it or some or such when she got back, seeing as her objective had essentially been accomplished already by an actual assassination attempt. <clears throat> After that, I told her I would believe her about everything. That probably made her feel guilty about setting me up, so she told me not to touch the file until she returned. Sounds about right. But then I went ahead and ran it anyway like a doofus. I think she just wanted to be believed. Shucks. Am I an awful friend? Nope. I'm not so sure about that. Well, before you go taking a massive sad crap all over your friendship credentials, consider this. Only she could manage to blow up your computer with a nasty death loop virus, and somehow make you be the one to feel shitty about it. Heh, <laughs> you're right. Or maybe you're the one or maybe you're the one who uniquely fills the predicate in that construction. I don't goddamn know. Your friendship with her is a half-drunken three-legged relay race, and the baton is a stack of stick of dynamite. Are you two the only ones on? And you two are the only ones on the track. Me and English are washing from the bleachers, high-fiving constantly. <laughs> I guess that's a pretty apt metaphor, even though it doesn't make the slightest bit of sense. Yes. I just wanted to start playing the game so badly. Now more than ever, I have reason to believe the stakes have increased dramatically. They have. And they will continue to. I think our dream counterparts are all marked for death, and if we st and if we are to stand a chance, we must move quickly. I agree. Just heard about your assassination on Prospit. Oh, she told you already? Who? RL? No. I read it in a newspaper. Um, are you being ironic again? No. I just picked up one of the sleazy Dursite tabloid rags. Sometimes they'll feature some pretty entertaining gossip about the royalty or whatever, but they're primarily dedicated to smearing Prospit. The press had a field day with the deaths of the page and the maid. Dursite? You mean the other planet? The evil one? Durs, yeah. Not evil, necessarily. That's a bit simplistic. The kingdom represents the forces of opposition to Prospit and the four heroes. Us. What did the story say about me? Dead. Was the big-ass headline. Then a photo of your dead body lying there, followed by a lot of bullshit slander. It was also reported your tower exploded. They couldn't find the body to give it a proper funeral. Probably incinerated. I didn't realize you had woken up in the game already. When did that happen? Don't know. Years ago. Don't really recall. I guess I shouldn't act surprised you didn't tell me. What with all your high f highfalutin secrecy. Eh, it's hard to explain. I was never technically asleep there. I was awake without realizing it. Then I realized it. 
and I sort of learned how to be awake th how to be awake there while awake here too. I'm awake there now, albeit pretending to sleep. Pretending? Why? For one thing, it gets a bit distracting managing two alert bodies in different places at the same time. And for another thing, it's better to maintain appearances. Everyone on Durst believes their heroes haven't woken yet, though they are both rumored to be very active sleepwalkers, which is half true. She can't ever seem to sleep still, goes off wandering for days. Sometimes I've got to go round her up from some godforsaken cranny of the abyss, drag her tipsy ass home, tuck her back in. Maybe I'll chain her leg to the bed if she doesn't wake up soon. Though, in light of the recent assassinations, her slumbering attraction to the void probably works to her advantage. No one ever knows where she is. I'm still not sure I'm following. Why are you maintaining the appearance of being asleep? On Prospect, it seemed as if the people there regarded me and Jake very highly, like celebrated figures. Is it not the same way on Durs? No, it's essentially the same situation here. They glorify us in the same way. Almost like we're their purple pajama team mascots. Even though they will completely oppose our objective when all is said and done. Kind of ridiculous, really. But even so, I think it's better to lay low, not alert anyone to my... alertness. That way, I could sneak around and gather information, do some reconnaissance before shit starts getting real. In other words, in other words, read newspapers, get a feel for the word on the street and such? As might a detective? Yeah, among other things. Like, keep an eye on agent activity. You mean secret agents? No, more like high-ranking officials. Judging from your knife wound, I'm betting you were the victim of the archagent himself. You should feel honored, I guess. Who's that? A guy named a guy named Noir. A real nasty dude. Crazy ambitious. Loves knives. If we're going to stand any chance of winning this thing, I've got this nagging suspicion we're going to have to take him down first. And a feeling that nags equally is this ain't going to be easy. That is too true from what we've seen of Jack Noir in the past. <laughs> Alright. Oh yeah, I wanted to like check and see what's going on on Strider's wall here for a sec here. Oh gosh. Well, there's a Sweep Sweeper O'Hella Jeff doll. There's there's Cal. He's got this horse thing. <laughs> there's there's some weird horse things going on here. He has a thing for horses, it looks like. Oh my goodness, that's... What's that pony? I always forget this pony's name. Anyway. Alright guys, it is about noon. And uh, I'm going to have to skedaddle here. But uh, before we go, just a couple of reminders. Maple Hoof, that's right. I always forget it's Maple Hoof. <laughs> I always forget Maple Hoof's name. Uh, all right, before we go, guys, um, just a couple of reminders. Uh, so there's no Homestuck stream next weekend. I am going to be out of town uh, visiting some friends for the Memorial Day weekend. Um, so there's that. So we will be back uh, Saturday, June 2nd is the next Homestuck stream. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'm going to drop a few links in the chat. Um, if you want to hang out with us outside of stream, I do have a Discord server if you want to come hang out with us there. I've got YouTube, I've got Twitter, and also you can follow Tara on Instagram if you want to see uh, more Tara adorableness. Um, also a reminder that this week, um, my streams this week are Monday and Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we're playing Transistor on Mondays. I started that last week, so we're going to continue with that tomorrow night. Uh, and then this Wednesday is the last Suikoden 2 stream. We're going to beat Suikoden 2. Uh, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time, so certainly come by for the finale of that. And then the following Wednesday, we're going to start Night in the Woods. So that is the plan moving forward. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on a Sunday. Um, I appreciate you guys coming by and having some fun with us this evening. This Not that evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time of day it is. Wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is. But, uh... But uh, thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will see you next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye, friends.